In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, me and my brother James are here to discuss the prospects, the top prospects in the NBL. I know Richard Stamen did an episode, I guess it was like two months ago. It was right after the Blitz. And now we are going to cover the top prospects in Australia. There's quite a few guys in the NBL that I believe that could see some time in the NBA in the near future and quite a few guys that could be in the 2024 NBA draft class. So now it is time to get James's opinion on the top prospects in the NBL Stars program. Stay tuned. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board, and my brother to my left, but to the right on the YouTube channel is James Barlow. I've mentioned before, James has been an excellent addition to the NBA Big Board team. I don't know what took him so long, Amen. but he is here now, and he has some very interesting takes in this episode, and I'm just going to come out and be honest, it's not a hot take for aggregation purposes. It's no. not a hot take to to blow up and, and, and try to, like, increase the followers and so on, even though we do want more subscribers and followers. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. But when we give out a take, it is not for hot take purposes. It's not to be... I mean, we want to be different, but it's not to try to be so far against the grain that that is kind of like our, our calling card. We just want to add a little bit of flavor to the NBA draft space. And this episode is going to, it's going to be an interesting one because we, we, we're probably going to have some debates. But the first player that we want to discuss is Alex Saar. Alex Saar has tremendously increased his draft draft stock this season. He got off to a, a really hot start to this season playing in the G League Showcase in Las Vegas. Well, Henderson, Henderson, Nevada, I was there. I thought he solidified himself, or at least made a name for himself at the time as a top five pick. I had him in, I think I had him at number 30 on my big board coming into the season. But that was after he had a, and I'll just be honest, I mean, we keep it real in this podcast. He only averaged seven points a game at the under 18s this summer, had a very lackluster summer. So I was a little bit down on him. I've always, always, always been high on his talent and what he could bring to the table, but I had some concerns. He addressed those concerns for me in Las Vegas and so far with his play. But James has a major concern that I don't think I've heard many people talk about. So let's just get right into it. Alex Saar, who I think is, if I had to do a big board right now, would be number one. Okay. Interesting. But, I mean, I mean, who, who, I mean, maybe Isaiah Collier, you can say, is, is, is better. But you have a major concern about Alex Saar. And what is that major concern? Be real with you, Roth. Be real. Yo, man, he's got some, he's got some questionable hands, like, Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver hands, man. So you don't think he can catch? I don't know, man. I'm so I'm watching the film because I'm trying to, you know, I don't I don't want to be a prisoner of the the G League uh, showcase moment, right? Right. So I'm going through and I'm watching film and I'm seeing him bobble passes in traffic, and like that's a huge concern with me. Uh, and, um, you know, after we, we upload this and record it, I'm gonna probably tweet out some videos of him dropping passes and like a big that struggles to catch the ball, man, in traffic is that's, that's hard to, that's hard to handle. That's hard to deal with. All right. So let me ask you this right now. He's only shooting 31% from the floor as a pick and roll finisher. Do you think that is related to his hands i would say so yes because if he's not catching the ball cleanly he's bobbling the ball and then so you bobble it and then when you do get control of it like that brief window that you have of a good shot or the shot quality of that window like shrinks right but also um 
they aren't using him as much in as the role man as I would like to see. Now, again, that could be because he can't catch the ball like that. And he's like, man, let me go ahead and just pop. Because, you know, sometimes catching the ball is just flat out mental. But, um, yeah, like, I just have concerns about him catching the ball in traffic. Now, again, he's athletic. And when he does catch and he gets a, a clean runway, you get to see all the great things that are Alex Saar. But, like, um, just I, I've got three drops uh, that I'm going to clip out or, yeah, going to clip and send. And it's just three, like, I've just started, like, watching. And it's it's concerning. And on top of that, I mean, I wouldn't say that's the that's one of my two main concerns is that another is I don't know if he – it's early and he's young, but his shooting splits aren't very encouraging either. Yeah, I mean, I think that the potential is there as a shooter. I don't think he's close to – close. 27% shooting on unguarded jump shots. Right yeah, there. I know it's only 32% on, on jumpers yes. also. But I, I think when I watched the film, I felt like there are times where he fades backwards on, mm-hmm. on his jumper. But I just like the way he moves. I like the size. Yeah. Seven one. I, I've heard like seven four wingspan. I've seen him make mid-range shots. I've seen him play with some fire and tenacity, which is always something that was questioned prior to this year. I think that he made the right decision by going to Australia. I think he's benefited the most from the choice he made just because he's he's playing in a competitive league. He's not necessarily being like crazy featured, but he right. does have a prominent role within the team. He's playing with veterans and he's playing in an environment where, you know, you, you want to win. You want to be competitive. They're not one of the best teams in the NBL, but he's not in a situation where, I mean, I just used the night, for example. If the night go 10 and 40. So Jay-Z say it's still gravy. <laughs> Yeah, because the Ignite's focus isn't supposed to be about winning. Development is supposed to, you know, be the main priority over winning. While in any other league in the world, there's no such thing as development over winning. You you want you want to win games. You 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 graded on wins and losses. I like the ball handling flashes. Yes. Especially on straight line drive. I like the fact that they're giving him freedom to like if he gets the rebound, he can push it up. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily initiate the offense, but he can bring it up. He just passes the eye test. Yeah, and, and 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 sorry to cut you off, but like even with my concerns about his, I think questionable hands. I don't know how great of a shooter he will become. I still have him number one because again he does a lot of stuff and there's a lot of potential. I'm just I'm just being real. Like I'm being honest. Like okay, he he introduced himself to the to the world increase his draft stock beating up on who the g league right ignite the same ignite team that's been getting smacked in the g league so it's like okay is he he's really good he passed the eye test he took advantage of that opportunity but was that like that was like uh i'm kind of of hard to explain he took advantage of a great opportunity against a team that is not good so if let's say the well, I mean, do you get what I, I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Now, I mean, of course, it's early. At the time, we didn't know the ignite, and the ignite have you're been right. injured. They've they're, they're definitely not at full strength. But I, I guess I can see your point there is that he made a name for himself against a team that so far has lost the game right. by 59 exactly. points. Exactly. It's not it's not the same thing, and I'm not comparing him to James Wiseman. But James Wiseman had that crazy game against like Central Connecticut, Eastern Shore, State something. Tech. Yeah, he blocked like nine shots and he shut it down. Rolled it. Well, he well he didn't shut it down. They shut he him got down. Suspended. And the game that he did play a major team was against Oregon. I remember he got in foul trouble. Only played like one half. But that was. Let's just be totally honest. That might have been the best thing for him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, short I mean, term, it worked out for him. Yes. I think he would have possibly gotten exposed if he stayed longer, and, and and so on. So it's like he was able to ride that wave into right. My job is I'm gonna ask the questions. I'm gonna continue to evaluate Alex Sar and not uh, grade him solely on that great performance. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So again. He looked great against what we today in November looks like a bad team. And again, that's what you you know, hey, you do what you're supposed to do. 
again, like I said, I have questions about his hands. I don't know how much of a shooter he's going to become, but you know what? He's athletic. He runs the floor. He's still blocking shots. Uh, he's very good at scoring on offensive rebound yes, putbacks and misses. Exactly. And the timing is there. And I'm not saying he just he can't get better. I'm just seeing things right now in November, and I'm just gonna speak towards them. And like I said, in with those red flags. I don't know how dark they are or how many of them they are, but I'm just going to mention that there are red flags. But you know what? This is a red flag draft. So mm-hmm. like he has issues. They all got issues. I still take him number one today. But I just wanted to point out that like, hey man. I mean, it's bobbling passes, man. He is. Another concern that I have is that he's only shooting 58% at the rim and only 48% on layups. So he's missing more than half of his layups. How many times is that because he... Well, I think it's a combination of maybe the, the, the bobbled passes... And just lack of strength. Australia is a physical, grown yeah. man's league. He was he had Aaron Baines guarding him, man. <laughs> that's it. Baines grown, grown, grown man. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's. So I, I think that is part of it. But again, in this draft, I think the flashes are enough to where you're like, hey, I can work with it. Yeah, I mean, we can we can figure something out. All right, when we return. We are just getting started. I want to talk about Trenton Flowers. We have different viewpoints on Trenton Flowers. James is a little bit higher on Flowers than I am. And so we're going to share our thoughts and opinions on Trenton Flowers from the Adelaide 36ers. Stay tuned. Very excited to talk about our partners at eBay Motors because they have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best, the absolute best fantasy picks each week. All season long, all season long, our partners at eBay Motor and Josh Lloyd have linked up. Whether you are preparing for the daily NBA draft or you are scouting for players on the waiver wire, every week, eBay Motors and Locked On is going to provide you with the players that we guarantee will fit on your roster. And this week, Josh has picked a few players that he believes can help your team out. One is Kyle Anderson. With Jaden McDaniels out for a week, Anderson could see a boost in his production to help your fantasy team. Also, Santi Aldama, he's a little bit surprising, but Aldama has replaced Marcus Smart. And the Grizzlies are just, just I mean, they've just been decimated with injuries. So Aldama is playing, and he's playing well and as a replacement for Marcus Smart. Then there's Jaden Ivey, who is back in the starting lineup, and that's always going to be intriguing. I know a lot of Pistons fans were wondering when was he going to get back in the starting lineup, and he's back in, and he's been producing. And then there's Eric Gordon, who is playing for Bradley Bill, who remains out. I mean, did the Wizards sell the Suns a lemon? That's just a question I have for you. Gordon has been starting and putting up solid fantasy numbers, and then there's Alex Caruso, who was in the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls, and he's always an appealing fantasy option because he just does so many things and stuffs the stat sheet. Now, what does that have to do with eBay Motors? Well, it's very similar because with the right fit for your fantasy team to help you win a championship, and with eBay Motors, we know a championship team is about the right fit, and it is the same with your vehicle. So if you are looking for parts to your car and you need the right fit, well, you definitely need the right fit. Then you go to eBay Motors because they have over 122 million parts to choose from, and it makes sure that your car is running smoothly or if it's just an accessory. It makes sure that it is the right fit, whether it's brake lights, LED headlights, the roof rack, the bumpers, Whatever your car needs, eBay Motors has it. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, it is guaranteed to fit the first time. That's very important. It is guaranteed to fit the first time or you will get your money back so you can keep your car looking good or running smooth at eBay Motors. Now, the eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only and exclusions apply. Once again, thank you for making the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. Also, big shout out to the Locked On team for starting the first 24-7 sports streaming podcast. Locked On Sports Today is 24-7 on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. 
You get all the great insight from the local experts, plus Locked On's national show. So you got to check out Locked On Sports today. Again, the first 24-7 streaming platform. I'm very thankful and grateful to be part of Locked On. It's been life-changing for me. All right, let's talk about Trenton Flowers. Let's get it. I'll let you lead off with your thoughts on Trenton Flowers. All right, check this out. You close your eyes, and I told you there was a 6'8 wing that was shooting 48% from the three, was an athlete, played hard, and showed you some ball handling ability. I'm not saying he's a great ball handler, but he showed you some ball handling ability. Mm-hmm. At the AAU level, he showed you some ball handling ability. Yeah. He showed you some shot creation, right? He plays super fast. Sometimes too fast. Who would you think I was talking about? I don't know. We could be talking about Ron Holland, right? Ron didn't. But minus so, the shooting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I mean, so yeah, again, that's, 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 I mean, a that's, major that's a major part, thing. Man. But I'm saying like. That's like I'm describing somebody as Jokic without the passing. Like I mean, <laughs> hey, you know, two out of three. But I'm just saying like, okay. <laughs> and Ron ain't six eight. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, some people think, man, they think he's 6'8", but he's not. So, okay, let me ask you this, though. If Trenton Flowers shoots better than Ron Holland, right, they show you the both the same uh, m- motor on offense, motor on defense. It's going to be hard for, for Flowers to catch Ron in the motor department. Ron's mm-hmm. a V12. Okay, but here's the thing. Hold on. Flowers may be a, a high V8, but Ron's a V12. And sometimes that V12 is... is but do it, you it need... Okay, so do I need a V12 if I'm just driving up 75? Or if I need a V12 if I'm on the tollway? It's like, do you need it all the time? No. You really just need to get from point A to point B. You're right, ahead. but I'm just saying, like... I don't, like, I mean, Ron is, like... A Bugatti as far as just power and, and, and just motor. Man, look, what is the I, purpose of a Bugatti me. if I live in the neighborhood? You just stunting on people. You just flexing. Right. But I'm just saying this. I see Ron Holland, one, two, three on a lot of mocks. Because right? people are they don't want to change it. I'm I know not, it's a small I'm not people size. though. I'm James. Yeah. I'm not people. I'm just saying, like, all things being equal. Flowers is going to grade out as taller. He probably will grade out as a better shooter. I don't. I think that's. I think you can check that as what the, the, as a fact that he's going to grade out taller, taller as a better, better shooter. shooter and ball handling slash shot creation might be the same. Now I know they toned down Trent Flowers. He tried. I don't know what he was thinking. I, you know what? I respect it because he was like, I'm going to try to add a new skill. And it didn't work as far as like trying to be a lead Ooh, ball handler. He's probably having nightmares nah, with Parker Jackson nah, Cartwright yeah, picking him up full court, yeah, yeah, turning yeah. him, but you know taking what, though? his cookies. Look, I respect it because he was like, I want to add something to my game. Because you know what? When I went back and watched his AAU tape, he played for Strive for Greatness. He was handling the rock. Yeah. So he was like, man, maybe it, are my handles going to translate at the next level? And he got humbled. Right? Yep. So right now they're kind of stashing him in the corner. He's playing a lot of 3 and D, coming off of handoffs. Uh, he does have a couple of opportunities, a couple of videos out there, him bringing the ball up the court and catching a couple of bodies. Yep. I'm just saying, he's taller. He's going to grade out as a better shooter. Shot creation, handles are going to be at the same level. I just want to know, why would Ron be the higher rated prospect if all things are equal? Because... Now, I'm not talking no, about. No, I'm not talking point. about. I'm not not talking about you. I'm not talking about the people who don't want to change because I can't help the people who don't want to change. I'm talking about you, Raphael Barlow. I mean, look, I'm not afraid to change my board and move someone up or down based off of their play, no matter how high I had them at the beginning of the draft cycle. I can't say that for others, um, especially because I think if you're playing for the Ignite, you can be hidden in a sense. I don't want to say the Ignite's games aren't as accessible because they are. You can find them on Tubi. You can find them on YouTube. But your flaws, at least to the scouting public, maybe not the NBA, aren't on full display as they would be. But you can say the same about about Australia. But no, I mean, I, I get your point. I definitely get your point. 
I think that Flowers has has helped himself, especially after getting off to like a terrible start. I mean, in the blitz, he had like five assists, thirteen turnovers. Mm-hmm. They scrapped the point guard experience, but I think, like I said, he's he's made a name for himself. I knew he was shooting the ball well. I didn't know he was shooting the ball that well. 52, 46, and 68. I know that like on catch and shoot jumpers, he's at 52%. Yes. He's at 60% at the rim, which is oh okay. Um, I think with the with the rim numbers in Australia, you may have to factor in like these are grown men and the teenagers are f- trying to finish in traffic against grown men. A little concerned about the ten assists and twenty four turnovers. But again, again, I, I, yes, have those concerns. But Ron has those same concerns. Yeah, and I don't want to make this. A, and I'm not slandering a, Ron. A I'm just, I'm just flowers bringing flowers and Ron. I don't want to make this the I whole kinda, segment. I kind of am, but I'm just kinda. trying to. I'm <laughs> just trying to bring awareness, man. That's all I'm saying. Go no, ahead. I mean like, but here's the thing: pre-draft buzz is real, like. And I'm getting on a tangent here, and I'll use Tyler Smith, for example. If Maras Buzelis was having the same exact splits and shooting numbers as Tyler Smith, he'd be number one on everybody's draft. Oh, if if Tyler Smith, excuse me, if Justin Edwards had the same splits as Tyler Smith, he would have shut it down. Because he was very high on a lot yeah. of y'all draft boards. DJ Wagner had Bub Carrington. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, go ahead. So, yeah, with Flowers, he passes the eye test. I like the, the body. I like the strength, the combination of size, strength, and frame, and explosiveness. He has a quick first step. Right. I like him. He's he's grown on me. At first, I did not did not like the the blitz where they played him at the point. And, but then you can see, like, all right, he has a role. Because at first, my question about him after the NBL Blitz was, what position does he play? But now I see a defined fit for him as a slashing wing that can knock down open shots, that's going to be strong enough to defend multiple positions and... Wants the ball handling. He has like a good foundation of ball handling and shot creativity. You see the vision. That you're going to have to respect it when he's knocking down shots because he is going to be able to attack a closeout. So with that being said, and the fact that you kind of convinced me on a little bit, (laughs) Trenton Flowers is going to be moving up Look, my board. Again, all I'm saying is this. He projects out to be... I wouldn't say at worst. I don't. He projects. He could. He could be like a Kelly Oubre type. Again, Kelly Oubre not really passing the ball. Not passing. Not at passing. All. But he can average sixteen and get you five rebounds and be your fourth best player as he is on. Is he the fourth best player? Whatever on the Sixers right now. Like a really good. Yeah, but this is. I would say. Ubre's first time playing on a winning That's team. true too. And again, always I'm, been on I'm just talking. Teams. I'm just talking about the talent. I'm not talking about like because again, I feel like Trent Flowers may have an opportunity to become not, from an okay ball handler to a good ball handler mm-hmm. to maybe a very good ball handler because he shows flashes. Yeah, and then like uh, watching his tape, there are times you'd be like, "Dang, dog, like pass the ball." But then you'll be like, man, that was a great pass. Yeah. So it's like, can he hone all that in? So like I said, I'm higher. I'm high on him right now. Yeah. No, it makes it makes sense. Yeah, if he can put it all together. But the thing that I like is that he has a, at least in my opinion, a defined skill set, the shooting that can help him get on the floor. Shooting, early. slashing, yes. But like I'm trying to think of a way where a guy like when I think about a guy in the NBA and if I want to take him at a certain range, I want to know, like, does he have a defined skill set that I know that can earn him minutes on the floor? And then from there, we can slowly add a little bit more to it. And so I think that he does have a defined skill set. And the way this draft is going and the way college basketball is looking. I'm trying to tell you. I mean, like, let's I'll use Justin Edwards, for example. I had Justin Edwards number one. I didn't. <laughs> I, you you are you are so far you're right on that one, and I I don't really know. I mean it's still early. He could turn it around, but it's hard to say that Justin Edwards looks better than Trenton Flowers. That's all right? I'm saying. Yeah. I mean I ain't, I'm not like, talking about you. I'm just saying like, hey man, look, let's update our boards, man. 
Yeah, but I just think there's a lot of people that don't want to necessarily be wrong. I think it's a follow the leader thing. And if the, the top like publications and platforms drop somebody that they had in the top five down, then others will, hey man, will follow. You're not a St. Lunatics fan, but my man said, hey, I've been wrong before. <laughs> All right. When we return, we're going to talk about Lachlan Albrick. <laughs> Very... Very interesting prospect. Hasn't really got the same buzz or fanfare as the other guys, but I mean, we're, we're going to split this up into two. So we didn't leave off Bobby Clinton and, and no. AJ Johnson. We're we going to, to. And then Ariel Huck Porty. There's going to be a part two of this, but we're going to talk about Lachlan Albrick when we return. I think this is one of, he's one of my favorite players. I don't know what the future holds for him as far as being an NBA prospect. But the boy got games. Stay tuned. Now, if you are an everydayer, then you know I love to talk about FanDuel. Why? Because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And right now, if you are a new customer, you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is not a better time to join than right now. Not now, but right now. And the app is very simple. It is very easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, which includes spreads, player props, overs, unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season because the FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL and locked on. All right, last segment wrapping up. Lachlan Albrick. Go ahead. You go first. Hey, I like him. I, I don't know, like, if there's an NBA fit for him because he's going to be an acquired taste because he's not jumping over the – he's not jumping out the gym. I mean, he's shooting, like, 40% on a small sample size, but he does what I want some of the bigs in this draft class to do. We talked about it with Donovan Klingon. Albrecht ducks in. He, I mean, he's got a great motor. Great motor. It's, it's, I mean, he, he's always moving, but he just knows how to use his body, leverage his strength, and duck in. If you put a smaller guy on him, he's running through him, he's taking him to the block, and he's posting up, but he's getting deep enough under the rim where all he has to do is flick a touch shot. That is what I was talking about with Donovan Klingon, what I would like to see him do. That ain't Donovan Klingon. No I mean, they're, they're different skill sets, but Ulbrich is a guy that knows how to use his body, his strength to be effective on the offensive end. And maybe it's because he's not going to be your lob threat. But he can put the ball on the floor, two dribbles. And I'm not saying I expect Donovan Klingon to put the ball on the floor, two dribbles, and do some of the stuff that Obrick does. But Obrick is a guy that abuses mismatches. Yo, he had an in and out crossover, turned it to a counter to a behind the back, and then back the dude down and shot a turnaround like jump. That's what I like. I like guys. All right. If you're running this defense where you're switching everything, a guy that abuses switches. You switch, you put a guard on him, he's going to back him down. You put a slow big on him, he's going to space the floor enough to where you have to respect it. And then he's, I wouldn't say blow by the big in transition, but he's going to get by them. And he just is not afraid to throw his body around. I just, I just like his offensive skill set. And maybe I'm biased here, but I think that somewhere down the line, there could be a role for him as a back, back in rotation energy guy off the bench that makes hustle plays because because he can shoot. You know what? At first, I was like, man, this dude ain't that right. What are you talking about? I and know, then I, I was you listening was to you. I was hating. Though. I wasn't hating. I wasn't aware. That's the difference. Uh but as I dug deeper, I was like, you know what? He got some game, man. He's got game. And it's not because it wasn't like like you said. He doesn't check the above the rim, super athletic. You know, you he doesn't check those. You can't put him into a box. You can't put him into that box. But is there a role for him in the NBA as a backup big? I I agree with you. 
because again, he's gonna play hard for sure. And he's not just playing hard and sloppy, like he's got skills. Uh, you can throw him the ball in a box, and he had the, the quick little Chris Weber baseline spin. Uh, he had the back back down, I think it was over the right hook, the right shoulder, excuse me. Like he's got talent. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see what I see what you was talking about, man. I ch- you see how I changed my opinion like in a matter of minutes, man. I didn't, I didn't have to keep hitting my head. Like he's legit good. Yeah, I just wish you would play more. I, I think that maybe with the coaching change with the Illawarra Hawks, he may get a little bit more time. Only 19 years old. Played at Cal State or Cal Riverside last year. I think he was the the player of the year in that conference. Decided to go back home to Australia. But I like what I see. He's 6'10". He's about 235 is what they have him listed at. He's like your traditional banger. But at the same time, he can bang. But he does have some skills. Can put the ball on the floor for a couple dribbles. Is always moving. He's the type of guy that I know if you're like a star, right? And, you know, you, you're you in the lineup with the second unit, with some second unit guys. And then you see this Lachlan Albrick coming in. He's going to make you work. Yeah. He's going to keep moving. He's going to set hard screens. Hard bone He's going to duck in on you. And even though you may be way more talented than him, he's going to be physical. He's going to give it his all on the defensive end, which, you know, may be a little bit concerning there. But I just <laughs> like what what he brings to the table. But that's just like my ideal scenario. I think they're in some form or fashion, I mean, we've seen guys come from Australia and not come at 21 or 22, but I think at some form or fashion down the line, I think I can see him cracking an, an NBA roster. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. We have a part two coming up where we are going to discuss the rest of the top prospects in the NBL. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow with my brother James, and we are out.